it is with honor and privilege that we present to you the Boston History Project. So that our people who have never ever suffered under the actual lash of slavery, occupation, discrimination and murder, understand the price that was paid to get you here with a smile, new clothes, and a song fest. Unhampered by the bomb, the dog, the club, the gun, the hangings that were done to keep us fearful of ever standing up and demanding that we be recognized as women and men. Why? So that our children might live to see a better day. So that our children might be Free. What brought you to um, Islam, given what you were um, coming out of uh, while you were here in Boston as you were exposed to this uh, religion through either the Nation of Islam or uh, post-WD Muhammad? Is that all of us who came in in the Nation of Islam uh, filled out a letter stating that we had heard the teachings two or three times and we believed in the teachings that we had heard from one of the ministers who was teaching. We, all of us who came in to the Nation of Islam wrote that letter, but Imam Muhammad later told us that that letter was a literacy lesson. Many of the people who came into the Nation of Islam did not, were not educated. And if you were back in that day and you could not read and write and were in Boston, people really not only looked down on you, but really gave you a hard way to go. Um, before I came into the nation, I, I was experimenting with a lot of things, but before I came into the nation of Islam, I was um, what they call a five percenter. My name, I changed my name back then, and my name was God Tahid Allah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and then um, there was the minister, I forget exactly who was up there at that time, but the minister was speaking, and sure. he was saying, Elijah Muhammad, messenger of Allah, and I jumped up, when you said the cheers, mm -hmm. and I jumped up like this, <laughs> My name is God Tahid Allah, and I made a big fuss, and the minister said to me, you know, like all the FOI, which I didn't know about at that time, <laughs> started to come over near me, and so um, I promptly sat down again, <laughs> but I was impressed with the fact that he would hear me out even though I was acting like a fool. <laughs> so um, through Brother Shaq here back here, I'm um, saying, come on back down, and me being impressed with how this minister was, I, step, I kept coming back down, and then I joined the Nation of Islam. As I said, I came in, my mother brought me into the nation. Um, but once I heard the uh, teaching, even though I was very young then, I believed in the teaching, and as my brother said, it is different. Um, I remember the, uh, the messenger saying that he came to teach us about ourselves, about self. Someone else would teach us the religion of Islam. All this history we've got in Boston, you know, history's everywhere, but the particular thing in Boston, I mean, Boston, we could show things, Malcolm, Malcolm was here, all right? Uh, Muhammad Ali came through here. Farrakhan was here. I mean, uh... uh when we say Muhammad, Muhammad Ali came through here, what does that mean? Well, there was a time, I remember when we brought him in town, and uh, I think the Midtown Motor End. Oh, yeah. And the security was that they had two adjoining suites. The security could be in one room and Muhammad Ali be in the other. Mm -hmm. And when the hotel room found out this was Muhammad Ali, yeah. they gave them the penthouse, Everything. honeymoon suite. Everything. For the, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it was free of charge, what they gave him, and it was like, and it threw everything out of whack because all the security was set up and planned. Now yeah. it was like, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like. And he took it. Uh, uh, yeah, he took it, of course. Uh, 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 and also, yeah. uh, were you yeah. with us on that one too? I was probably, but I wasn't that close with the security. Oh, oh okay, the well, 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 the, the, I, <laughs> Because I'm the one that booked the room but under a different name. So the manager said, look, I'll give you guys money back. Just let me have a picture of him with me so I can show my son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we brought my Ali down to the area where the manager was. He put it on next to Ali. Ali put it on. And he said, make sure to take the picture. And everybody taking pictures for him. Cause he wanted to make sure he got a picture. <laughs> it was such a... It, 
amazing brother, man. Amazing, amazing. Alhamdulillah, I made the Hajj um, in 1977 with Imam W.D. Muhammad and 300 people from our community under Imam W.D. Muhammad. That was the largest um, Hajj that ever left um, North America. And there's some brothers in here that actually made the trip with us. And so on that, what it actually taught me concerning Imam W.D. Muhammad was that it taught us to be independent thinkers. Uh, at that time, we were calling ourselves Bilalians. So uh, we were in a, in a big hall where there were a bunch of um, so-called sheikhs and big high learned scholars and muftis and whatever. And, and one of them said, don't, you know, don't, don't call yourself Bilalians. And Imam W.D. Muhammad said, we are Bilalians and, uh, in front of everybody. And so we all said, the group of us that went, we said, Allahu Akbar, and they had never seen a group of African-American blacks that independent and that, so strong, that strong with a leader. own words, he talks about why he left here, why, why did he leave the nation of Islam. And then we talk to believers who said he should have left. And when I was doing this interview, I, I didn't know how deep uh, Boston was split. My name is Sultan Abdul Rahim. I started back here in 1959. And what I learned discipline-wise, I still carry today. And we should never take what we have for granted. If we do, we're fooling ourselves, period. Okay? Be proud of what you have. The interesting part, when people talk about a transition, I was fortunate enough to go and sit under the training of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a sister. He gave me my first Quran. So there were many people on the outside who understood much more than we did. And remember, we, we used that phrase, deaf, dumb, and blind. But many of us, as the Imam said, are still, quote, and I quote the Imam, boogie wooging ourselves straight to hell, which means that we're not taking the time to study and learn uh, how these various experiences have, have, have been connected. If you had understood the lessons, you would understand that the question of solar, um, other solar systems was answered for us. The question of energy was answered for us. We're talking quantum now. We were learning all of that way back in the 50s. We didn't know what it was but we were told, memorize it. It's important for us to realize that, that there are many people on the outside who realize the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and, 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 and his son. And, and in terms of his son, in terms of the Imam, I don't think that we understand the depth and breadth of his mission. <laughs> 